Hello, my name is Alexis Selkwood, and my talk, my university and unity and diversity talk, is over the challenge of care in our schools by Mel Nadi. During this talk, I will touch on three key concepts. My first concept is who Miss Nadiens is. Her second is what hurt she contribute to the education, and the third is how I'm going to apply that to my social studies classroom. So let's first look at Miss Nadiens. Miss Nadiens was born in Irvington on. New Jersey in January 19th, 1929. She was her school valedictorian, as well as pursued college at Montclair State College, where she got her bachelor's in math and physical science. She then received her master's at Rutgers College, or Rutgers University, sorry. And then after she got her master's, she went back to teaching. She taught at an elementary school and a high school for 17 years and then she decided to pursue further education and get her PhD at Stanford Graduate School of um, Education, where she then was a member of their staff in 1977. She held various um, academic honors, like at one point in time, she was the academic acting dean and associate dean for four years for this College of Education, and she also held other various positions on where she worked as an academic in the field of philosophy and talked about ethics. She retired in 1998, but she wasn't done then. She decided to keep writing books. She wrote 17 books and over 200 articles. Miss Nadine has 10 children. She has 39 grandchildren and over 20 great-grandchildren who most are actually educators themselves. She was married for 62 years before she lost her husband in 2012 over cancer. Like Miss Nadine's, I agree that she said that her education growing up influenced her philosophy once she became a teacher. And we all know that there's those teachers that you want to be just like. We also know there's teachers that you want to be like, eh, I want to be the complete opposite of those teachers because I didn't write that class or how they ran it. So what we do and what we've been through influences up what we're going to be tomorrow. My buzzword is care. I chose this, well, technically Miss Nottings did because her whole book is about caring. And Miss Nottings believes that there should be taken away from compartmentalized subjects and put on concepts of care. And these six concepts are care for self, care for the inner circle, care for strangers and distant others, care for animals, plants, and the earth, care for human made world, and care for ideas. Although I'd love to talk to y'all about each one of these individually, I don't think I would do it under 20 minutes. So as you'll see, I gave you a handout and I picked out a couple of things from each of those throughout the book that would kind of sort of be able to help with your teaching in your classroom. Y'all can take a look at that later if y'all want it. When you think about what Ms. Nell and audience contribute to the education, one must think, what is care? According to the German philosopher Martin Heidenberg, he describes care as the very being of human life. We all are humans. We're social people. We want to care for people. And we want people to care for us. So everything that you do, it's about benefiting yourself or others. Ms. Nadine argues against liberal education, saying that it's so straightforward and you're so trapped on doing every subject and you're trafficking students either to go to the college or go to the workforce instead of looking back and seeing what the student needs. And she has this by saying we should do concepts of care. And when you center around care, you center around what the student's needs are. Um, <clears throat> she also believes that as long as our school is on a hierarchy, everyone will be focused on the rewards and penalties of work instead of what the work is actually doing. Everyone would love to have high grade scores, but that might not always translate to what you're going to do in the real world. It's more important to have knowledge that you can apply to your life than have knowledge of who died in 1916. Mortimer Alders argues that there are no ch unteachable children. There are only schools, teachers, and parents who fail to teach them. I agree with this because back in my grade school, I have an older brother. He's two years older than me. One of his grade school teachers said he is the dumbest kid they ever had. He acts out. He never does his work. He's always getting in trouble, and they never stopped and thought, why is he getting in trouble? My mom then got him tested, and we moved schools, and she found out that he had severe ADHD. 
So instead of showing that he couldn't do the work, he would act out, and the teachers wouldn't try to see that. After one year at our new school, our teacher said that he was one of the smartest kids in her class because she took time to care about him and not what he was scoring. The moral of that story is the teachers at my new school cared about us. They didn't care about what we got on a state's test. They cared about us as individuals. As teachers, we definitely did not choose this occupation for our salary because everyone knows teachers don't get paid a lot. We choose it because we care about our students. Not one of y'all chose it because, oh yeah, you're going to make millions. <laughs> I doubt that. So you chose it because you care about students and you care about their education. Ms. Nyance gave the concept of they don't care. As a history teacher, this really hits home because no one likes history. They always think it's about dead old white men. Why do we need to know that? Well, to me, it's your history helps develop your, your past, develops your present. So in order to get people to stop don't caring, you have to get something that they're relevant, that they know, and that they're interested in. Ted Sizer is an ally because he has a shift in inter interdisciplinary studies where the focus isn't so set on one question, one answer, one way. Instead, they have it where you have a theme and you can t approach it on different, on different sides. So that instead of it being one right answer, you have people's thinking. This also will lead to people having discussions, where when you have discussions in your classroom, like a debate, you get to hear sides of both stories, and you might find out a student might look at something a little bit differently than you do. One of the things that she said was, we have to be educators first, mathematician mathematicians second. Although we're not all math contents, it's def definitely relatable. As teachers, we have to educate our students. I remember there was times when there was something that happened, like politically, or even whenever we had the shooting, or the scare of the shooting, we didn't just move on like nothing happened. Our teachers stopped and talked about it. We got educated, because that is what we needed. That was the care that we needed that day. And that's what good teachers do. They figure out what the students need. Although I can't talk about all six, I would like to talk about these two, because they really hit home for me. On um, the caring for self, one of the things that Nell Nodding says is we have to have intellectual as well as practical aspects in our education. We don't need to know all knowledge. We also need to know knowledge that we can apply to later in life. She uses the example of SPE. We don't need to just say, you need to go run a mile because you need to do it. You need to tell them why you need to run a mile to stay fit so that when they do graduate, they don't have someone to say there, oh, you need to go run a mile, it's Tuesday morning. They know how to take care of their body. One of, the te one of the philosophers in the book said, Goat said, we learn from those we love. I don't know if you all remember, but we remember those teachers that impacted us because they cared about us. I would love for students to know who died in 1916, who was the first president, what year they were, what year they ran, what Republican or Democrat, but I'd rather have students know why they should vote, why they should want to be a good American. What, what is their heritage? How can their heritage apply to them and why is it so important? Because that is who makes up, us up. The caring for the inner circle, um, I'm sorry, developing relationships. We have to develop relationships that students know that we're gonna always be there for them. And that's with your coaches, that's with your teachers, your teammates, your associates, your colleagues. You have to have a caring relationship because like I said earlier, I wanna care for you and y'all wanna care for me. That's just our human nature. Another thing is we have to find what is important to the students. We have to know what refreshes or renews them. Like for me, if you all want to talk about softball or do yourself projects or even reading, I, I will talk to you all day. And then maybe as a teacher, if you know that a student's interested in that, you might get them to finish that science homework or that math homework, that one hard problem, because they actually know that you care about what they're doing. When we care in the inner circle, the takeaway point with this is The takeaway point is there's nothing more important to us than stable, loving connections. This is the connection we share with each other. The irony in this was we have to care for one another, even if they're strangers or even if they're our best friends. And one of the things that was funny is she mentioned that we should, she suggests that we should do middle school tutoring, which is so funny because in this class we're doing middle school tutoring because everyone looks at the middle school as like the middle child who doesn't really get a lot of love. So we always like love the little kids. In high school, we have to prepare them for college. 
but the middle school is kind of left out of the equation. So I thought that was funny how we actually incorporate that into our classroom. Like I said earlier, Goet mentioned that we learn from those we love. And one of the things that she asks is, why are we in schools? What is the reason for high school? The reason for high school isn't for teachers to get good grades, it's for students. Ms. Nadine says, the reason behind this change is to emphasize what is truly supposed to be the reason for schools. The students, the education they receive in high school should be helpful to when they are moving on on their own. It has to be relevant because if it's not relevant, no one's going to remember. We all want them to remember what we taught. Now, how I'll have this in my classroom. So, although I'd love to, I doubt as a new teacher I'll be able to change the curriculum of the whole entire school. So, <laughs> instead of doing that, I would like to change it first in my classroom. One way I can do that is I have in field trips. We can go to local hospitals and local nursing homes and talk with the elderly who have experienced historic events and have partaken in that. We can talk about how it's affected them and just how they are doing and how they did and what they were doing and if they remember it. This firsthand account is not going to be around for long and it will help develop a relationship between our school and the community as well as give them a friend to go visit. After hearing these stories, students can compare to primary documents while also finding historical newspapers and events from the days that the elderly can remember. This will also help students to work on writing historically accurate papers while also working cross-curricular with English while meeting literacy standards mentioned in the Mississippi Social Studies Framework. Another way is to have guest speakers. If we can't take our children out to field trips, we can take the field trip inside. So whenever we have guest speakers, we can have like local historians or um, museum workers come and show artifacts over the unit we're studying that week, and it'll give them a reason to care for that handmade world and be able to see, hey, in 1900, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have Instagram. How did they talk to each other? And be able to see and sort of live that life instead of just reading it in a book. Another one that I really was passionate about is, is a middle school project. This can be helped by having a high schooler and a middle schooler partner together and do a project for the end of the year. This will help the older students learn how to be good role models because like us, we're teachers. We're gonna be role models if we like it or not. So we might as well be a good one. Plus, it helps the younger kids see, hey, it'll actually be nice to stay in, stay in high school, and it's okay to hang out with kids younger than you. It's okay to be a good role model. Plus, it'll be fun and get them a little bit different. These middle school partnered projects can be any section of history we decided as the teachers. While having a social studies fair at the end of the school, end of the school year, students can show off their inner history nerd with style with their middle school partner. By having rubrics and guidelines throughout the semester, standards will be met from both the National Council for Social Studies as well as the Mississippi Social Studies Framework. Um, this, these all would also meet our standards. The Mississippi Social Framework standards that will be used in this classroom would be understanding major social problems and domestic policy issues in post-Reconstruction American society, Understanding the evolution of the American political system, its ideas, and institutions post-Reconstruction. Understanding how the global position of the United States has been involved as a result of imperialism, economics, technological changes, and involvement in international wars and conflicts. Understand how the civil rights movement achieved social and political change in the United States and the impact of the, the struggle from the civil rights of African Americans and other groups. The NCSS standards that will be met would be over the time continuing and change standards, the people, places, and environment standards, which mostly likely be the focus, considering that one of the concepts of care is over people, places, and environment, as well as assisting students in learning about um, personal connections to these time, places, and social cultural systems. So while we're having fun, we're also learning what we need to as well. And one of my teachers, she did something like this. At the end of the year, our senior year, the very last project, we'd have our end of the year project. And everyone was so excited about it. Some of us picked our, our themes sophomore year because we knew we were going to have to have it. These themes ranged from the gateway arch to silent films and even like torture methods. Like it was whatever you can think of. And everyone remembers that class because it was so much fun because 
we got to be the teacher for the day, and we got to teach our classmates whatever we wanted. Plus, even years later, you're always going to remember, oh, hey, you're the one that did the silent film. That was so cool. So that's one of the teachers that I want to be like because she made it fun, and that's one of the ones that is the teachers that you love that cares about us and let us pick our own subject. Another teacher did completely opposite of what other history teachers did. He let us choose our curriculum. We got to choose what type of test we would have to make us feel like we're actually the ones picking when in actuality he would be the one letting us feel like that but we were learning what we need to and this teacher got us the same information as the other class but we remembered it because we had more fun because he did it innovatively because he cared about us although i love this book i do have a few critiques some of the few critiques are it was outdated it was published in 1992 which Sadly, some of the things that she said was a problem still are, which is just, I, that was just mind-blowing to me. But luckfully, thankfully, there were some things that she said we need to do, and we have moved in the right path. Another one is, it focused more on the curriculum change, which as a teacher, that's hard to do. It was more based towards the um, administrative side, but you can definitely apply that to your own classroom. There was one big issue I had during this book, and it was about safety. I'll read you the expert excerpt. To live by our primary purpose, we must make schools far more open places than they are now. Parents and other community members should be free to attend, watch, and help at the invitation of teachers. Which in 1992 might have been a good idea, but with all the all the different like school shootings and the security issues, that might not come into play. But work with administrators and far in advance planning might be able to have teachers and other teachers and other um, community help come into our classroom. And I, although I liked reading about math and art, she used those two as her specific examples of how to apply this, implement this. Um, she, I wish she would have had other contents like social studies, for instance. But she definitely gave a lot of good information on how to in, incorporate it into your subject major, which is also in your ISIS packet. The educational re researchers mentioned in this project were Nell Nottings, Martin Heidinger, Mortimer Alder, Ted Sizer, and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. As I close, there is one thing I would like to leave you with. During this book, she kept on mentioning this one question. She answered it over and over again, but she kept on asking it, and it made me think, what is my answer to this question? What do I answer this in five years? What am I, is my answer going to be different in 10? And that question is, it is what I would like for our children. What do you want for your children? Thank you.